So in the last video, we derived Green's theorem for a vector field with only x components. Today we're going to do the opposite, okay, and we're going to look at a vector field Q, which only travels in the y direction. So it's pretty much the inverse of what we did before. So as you can see, this time we have limits a and b defined on the y axes, but we still have a curve c, okay, but this time c1 and c2, of course, where x is a function of y this time, okay? So from a to b, that is c1, and from b to a, that is c2. On c2, x is equal to x2, y, and x is equal to x1, y, on c1. Okay, so here's our uh, function, our vector field, q of x, y, and of course that only has y components, where the i and the k components go to zero. So we're going to do the exact same things we did in the last video. Okay, so we're going to compute the line integral of our vector field. So along a curve C, so that's Q or X, Y. Okay, and we dot that with dr. That, of course, is equal to the integral of Q of X, Y. Okay, d y. Alright? X and Z components are zero. Okay, so what's this equal to? This is equal to the integral, okay, from B to A, okay, because that's uh, C2. This is equal from B to A of Q of X2Y y, okay, dy plus the integral from a to b of q x1 and then y and then dy. All right, but again we want to have um, the same limits here for our integration, so this simply becomes an a, that becomes a b, and this becomes f minus. Okay, so our line integral then becomes the integral from a to b of q x one of y y and then we minus q x two and dy. Okay, so it's following a similar progression as we did in the last video, and I think, I don't need to explain, but this again is equal to the integral from a to b of q of x, y. And of course, we're going to evaluate this, as you can guess, where x is equal to x2, y, and x is equal to x1, y. Okay, so we got the integral from a to b of q of x, y evaluated at x equals 2 and x equals 1. Okay, and that's dy. So like last time, we can write this as a double integral or a volume integral. So a to b and then the integral from x2y to x1y, of course, is the partial derivative with respect to x dx dy. Okay, so I remind you again, the x's cancel, you integrate the differential, and we get this exact equation here. Okay, and of course you can replace these limits with the region R. Okay, and so we can finally say that the line integral of our curve C of the vector field x, y, dy is equal to the positive double integral, last time it was negative, and we have dq dx and then dA. Alright, and so I'll remind you what we got last time. 
in the previous video. That was with the vector field P. So P X Y and that was DX but it was equal to minus the double integral over the region R dP by dy dA. So obviously we need to combine these now to get our to get the complete form of Green's theorem. So one way to do that is combine with vector fields P and Q. I'm going to do that and call this F. F is a vector field with x and y components and it's equal to P of x, y, i plus Q x, y, j. Like that. Okay? And so then we can say the total line integral of this vector field f, f dot dr, is equal to the line integral of p of x, y, dx, plus the line integral of q, x, y, dy. Okay, and of course you can put this under one integral. So, we now know this is going to equal the double integral over our region R, negative dp by dy dA plus dq by dx dA. Okay, and it should be quite easy now to come to the conclusion of Green's theorem, which says the closed line integral of our vector field with x and y components is related to the volume under some surface, which is dq by dx minus dp by dy times dA. And that, my friends, is Green's theorem. Okay, and that, of course, is for C going in an anti-clockwise direction.